Bardo as opposed to an RV is that it, they're very linear. Um, they used to always exit out the back, you know, unlike a modern RV, which usually exits from the side for various different reasons. Um, in fact, the original caravans all entered through the front because you have horses pulling you around, so the door would always be at the front. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my next video. Today, we're going to continue our series uh, with KC at Winter Count. Uh, today we're going to see a fantastic Vardo gypsy wagon made by George Crawford. I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, KC, take it away and show us that amazing work. Winter Count was started in 1995, and it is one of a family of gatherings that strive to reconnect people with old ways of making fire, tanning hides, forming metal, hunting, gathering, and much more. They teach ancestral skills that were essential to the survival and well-being of all cultures. Through the learning and mastery of these skills, people find that they can connect to a simpler way of living, similar to the connection we find in van life, and as well as forming a deeper connection with the natural world. Rabbit Stick and Winter Count provide a camp experience with some of the best instructors in their fields, teaching what they've learned through experience, experimentation, and through source materials. Many of them have lived deeply among the wild places, hunting, raising their own food, and making their own clothing and tools from the most basic elements. I attended Winter Count 2020 and have created this series of interviews with instructors who share their perspective on how these primitive skills can integrate with modern day van life and the nomad lifestyle. George, what do you te what are you teaching here at Winter Count 2020? I'm teaching a, a woodworking course, and um, we're making uh, saws by learning old style uh, frame saws for carpentry by learning some basic um, joinery skills using old time hand tools. Well, my, my profession is archaeology. That's what I do as a living. And uh, but I'm a woodworker, and um, I've been a woodworker a long time. I started out life as a carpenter, uh, working on job sites from the time I was a teenager, all the way through college and all the way through graduate school. So I uh, had a lot of experience building homes and uh, and doing other heavy woodworking, and got into the more finer skills as I got older. Uh, well, I grew up with uh, family members who were pretty talented. My great-grandfather and grandfather were both uh, woodworkers, and I wasn't old enough to really apprentice under either of them, but I learned a lot of basic skills and, and saw a lot of what they did, and I just got more and more interested in fine woodworking over the years. I got interested in instrument making and tool making and um, learning cabinetry, so you know it all just builds and grows on each other. So this Vardo, as of this trip, has probably gone about 28,000 miles all over the west, between Oregon and California and all the western states. Wow, 28,000 miles on this. Yes. And did you have any problems or any issues with it? No, other than one one bad tire. We've uh, had all good good experiences with it so far. You know, it's um, it's always it's a really good introduction to people. You meet a lot of people in parking lots and in campgrounds and off-road that you probably would never talk to if you just showed up in a Winnebago, you know, <laughs> if you just, if you come with something that looks a little odd, uh, you end up, you know, giving a lot of tours and talking to a lot of folks. Yeah. What kind of trailer do you have underneath it? Oh, uh, I've got a, uh, got a utility trailer, a tandem two-wheel with brakes. Mm -hmm. And how much weight is the entire... Um... I haven't weighed this one yet. My, old, my older version, I can't quite recall, but I think it was around 3,000 pounds uh, running. And it could be more or less, depending if I was coming to an event and had a lot of tools, a lot of water. You know, that, that varied by about 500 pounds. Well, English gypsy wagons, which really weren't all owned by gypsies. There was a whole caravan community in the late Victorian England of people who just really liked these luxury caravans. I think the guy's name was John Harris who started this kind of trend of, uh, I imagine it was mostly upper class people with time on their hands who had these beautiful Vardos built and they kind of became known as gypsy wagons. I imagine most average Roma people couldn't afford a really fancy one. You know, maybe people with money can. Um, but there was this trend to travel in style you know and, and style and um, and luxury was was really nice and you don't have to stay in hotels and you can camp on the road 
Now, um, have you been coming to Winter Count for very long, or yeah, this is I think of, uh, over about the last 19 years. I haven't hit everyone, but uh, I've been to Winter Counts over the last 19 years. So a lot of our audience travels full time in either vans or RVs or different types of vehicles. And how do you see the skills that you learn here or at any primitive skills gathering? How do you see how that might integrate into like modern day van life? Uh, well, I think anything that uh, gives you more self-confidence when you're in the back country for sure would be useful skills because it's easy to become isolated. I've been cut off in rural Utah or rural Arizona after a big storm and Arroyo fills up and you end up spending a few more days at a place than you ever thought you might have to. So having real survival skills, um, even if you don't have to use them all, is brings you a level of confidence uh, that uh, I think makes your travel a lot better. Yeah, hunting, trapping, foraging, um, knife making, metallurgy, you know, people here have the wide, wide variety of skills. Fishing, um, different types of net making, you know, we've made net bags that we use inside the, our, our daily life, you know, uh, making a net bag is just a great skill or uh, how to gather water in the wild. So yeah, there's everything from how to dye cloth and recycling clothing to making uh, leather, uh, working with leather, you know, uh, making baskets. Uh, I've seen some incredible projects come. A person came for a basket making class one time and built a uh, truck box for his bed out of willow. You, know, oh, you nice. just never know what people are going to use things for. <laughs> All right, well, do you mind if we uh, take a look inside no, the Vardo? Not. Okay, thank you. Vardo, as opposed to an RV, is that it, they're very linear. Um, they used to always exit out the back, you know, unlike a modern RV, which usually exits from the side for various different reasons. Um, in fact, the original caravans all entered through the front because you have horses pulling you around. So the door would always be at the front so you can keep an eye on the horses. You can keep an eye inside where the kids are. Um, these tend to not, all of us who are Vardo builders tend to not have a bathroom facility inside or often not a full kitchen inside. Um, I have a kitchen box here that keeps a lot of the stuff that I use day to day. Um, place for stove, extra fuel. Um, this is just kind of some loose storage right now because I'm not cooking for myself all week. But a kitchen box outside and a table is where all the cooking goes on. Um, I use mostly oil lamps and then I have some solar power and I have a little bit of battery power in here, but not very much. I just decided to keep it real off-grid, low-key. I knew I wouldn't be at hookups very often, you know, mostly living in Arizona, New Mexico, the Four Corner area. Um, I was on BLM land a lot, so we're just kind of standalone and just don't need the maintenance. I love that the door, is that a door knocker and yeah. also a people? Yes, it is. And so over the years, <laughs> as I was building this, I was thinking about it for several years. I was just picking up little things in different places and thinking, oh, that's kind of cool. And had boxes of things like this Victorian coat hook and this old uh, door knocker peephole. And, you know, start gathering up nice hinges that aren't like, aren't traditional hinges, you know, they're very Victorian, <clears throat> you know, so they're just, there's something a little classier. What are these covers here? Oh, these are just security covers, so it's hard to get to the, gotcha. um, to get a lock, we you know, it helps. It open. Yeah, it makes it a little bit harder to break in. This is something that people might find really useful too. Yeah, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. okay. They're bolted through. Amazing, okay, you guys. And then the door nice. latch is open because I keep it open quite a bit. I used to have a Dutch door on here, which I really liked, but I found this door at a, at an estate sale, and I just loved it. It's mahogany. I was going to ask what wood this is. So this yeah, is a mahogany door. It's a door. big mahogany door. And here's the inside of the people, and it's got right. the little cover. Yeah, it's oh, very cute. Gosh, that's beautiful. So I just loved finding all these details. Oh, I found that at just some antique store in a glass case for a few bucks. And it was just some little brass thing nobody wanted. My God, the inside of these. Aren't they a great? I know. They're, those are my favorite piece of anything. And then the um, having a wash pan hanging on the door was very traditional um, sheep wagon. So, you know, you can pull it out, set it up and take your your uh, sink bath. And mm -hmm. sometimes think people think you're an invalid and it's a it's a bed pan, but it's, not, it's just for washing up. The detail that you have put into this, it's such a labor of love. How long did you say it took you to build it? Well, I've been working on it for 11 years. Wow. I'm sorry, uh, but 10 years. 10, Ten years, years is just very non-old fashioned. It's a, a it's a toolbox. It's a it's meant for tools, but it locks up. Uh, we can keep 
anything we want to have extra safe here out of the hands of kids but we can also keep all of our you know day-to-day -day stuff because everybody needs a junk drawer um, place to keep idea. a little bit of food we can keep our propane stove in here um, you can just keep all the stuff that you don't want rambling around did you paint that paint that button? <coughs> I did yeah okay. he's another coat of paint but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you know you always have to have a lot of shelves and a lot of hooks I've found we can set our little propane stove up in here and cook in here on in bad weather um, but we generally do all our cooking outside found this old window this old transom window in a antique store we were traveling through Lubbock one time and my wife really liked it so she came out of the store with it beautiful Beautiful. And I like this old antique camping gear. So this old stone bridge folding lantern is, you know, really nifty from I think the 1800s. Um, it's got mica instead of glass. Wow. Were a lot of these items expensive, like the door? No, not really. I don't spend people. a huge amount of money on stuff. I, that was part of the goal is to not spend. I, I'm not super rich. I didn't want to spend tons and tons of money, so I can mm. lift this up. And so everything has storage in it, just like every. Right. RV should really everything yeah. should be double purposed and yeah. and then this is just a washing up station this is an old Russian coffee pot um, that's beautiful it is it's really nice so I can stay I can do my shaving and brushing my teeth and cleaning up in here right wow um, you know and I'm a soap maker so that's some of our scents for this and just little bits of art and things I've collected over the years you know like caravan oh, that's a picture someone took of me and my daughter in our first caravan we built oh wow <laughs> years and years ago so he printed that out and we had to frame that and put it in here did you make this at um, yeah, one of that. these primitive skills no guys? I made it long long ago uh -huh. just on my own I make a lot of this on my own and mm -hmm. as an archaeologist uh, tools are, are, are my thing in survival so my career and my um, hobby really overlap Right. So right. one of my blacksmith friends was nice enough and made us a nice set of uh, tools for the stove. This is a, a four dog. It's called a four dog tent stove. And where did you get this? I got this before I built the Vardo. This is um, meant for uh, horse packing. It's pretty lightweight. Um, guy in, I think he's in Montana, makes these. Oh, he wow. makes um, tent stoves. Uh -huh. uh, he makes them out of steel or titanium. It looks like it's really efficient. It's perfect for this size. Yeah, and it's it'll heat this place a little too hot pretty quickly if you're not careful. If you go shorter, it won't last all night. Yeah. That's the only problem. Oh, I see. So, so I have a friend, he had one made, he had it shortened, and that's the only thing. It won't burn all night. It's a right. little too small. Because there are stoves called a cubic mini that a lot mm -hmm. of people use inside their vehicles. Right. So as long as you don't mind stoking it once, right. you know, it's not a big deal. They've told me they're up every two hours. Right. So, so this will go most of the night. So if I'm woken up right. in the middle of the night, I just throw something on and that'll usually get me through. Excellent. This morning, I think I just missed it. I slept a little too late. So at least four hours, possibly eight, oh, yeah. depending on how you dampen it down. Exactly. So we dampen it down quite a bit. And of course, all this is storage. Mm -hmm. uh, between these two benches there's a planks that are kept under here that will uh, fill in this gap so this becomes a little twin bed right here um, so one of the guys traveling with me he stayed in the twin bed on the way like up all the shepherd wagons and caravans this pulls out to be a table for dinner you know so pull out has a leg mm -hmm. that pops in or just for coffee in the morning we usually just pull it out halfway and you don't need to put the leg and in the bed pulls out to be a double bed oh it does so that's why it's kind of rolled up it's a futon uh -huh. um, it's a soft futon, so you can pull it out, it becomes a double bed. And then uh, you've got shelving here. Lots of shelving. You know, you need all your spots. And uh, so this is kind of like personal grooming gear and hygiene stuff. And um, and on the inside, you've put maps. Yeah, I just thought that was kind of a neat thing, you know, in the yeah. last century when they were sealing up walls, they would often use newspaper or maps or, right. or old uh, prints. Um, just plastered to the wall and I thought that's a really neat idea you know I want to do that yeah this is um true old-time wagon design has a, a strong upright front and back wall that are very stiff and everything is tied together to the front and back wall so this the roof is made by purlins these are called purlins that run full length um, and they lock front and back wall together and this one has a center wall for more strength because this is kind of a longer wagon this is 12 feet so the central wall adds a lot of strength as well. 
And um, this is actually the wall off of my first Vardo. <laughs> this oh, is the wow. back wall off my first Vardo uh -huh. <clears throat> when we rebuilt it. And then the whole arc over the top, you know, was based on that. And I built it so that I would never bash my head anywhere in here. And so nobody tall would hit their head. Oh, um, wow. True caravans, you know, they always have the curved top. And I just love the curves. Everything has to, you know, yeah, have the nice curves. So I actually used myself as a model. And um, I did a lot of uh, sketching and uh, drawing. And since I had been a builder before, I knew how to do a lot of drafting. And so I drafted out plans with a little... Uh, cut out of my height and moved it around in different places to see how I would fit in different areas because I figured if I could fit my wife and daughter would easily fit too. Right. I love these little shelves here and oh, behind thanks. the fireplace. Yeah. yeah which thanks. is really interesting um, that you're able to fit this in and then did you create a firewall? Right yeah so here? this is um that's a mineral board firewall with a metal over it and then a second one behind it and a metal oh i uh, see there's two it. okay yeah because i'm way close to the wall you know you got to be real right. careful with that and um i was really worried so with, as the through hole up here to the roof is cut right to the edge of this and then it's stuffed with the uh, um heat dampening material oh so nice and there's no fire a protection of, yeah, well we hope we hope there's no chance <laughs> So far, so good. Right. We've had some hot fires in here. It's hard. It was hard to figure out the final design, honestly. And I, ne I never. It took me years to to really dive in. I probably spent about four or five years mulling it over, and um, made a lot of designs. And made a, I even made some scale models um, out of Bristol board and um, art board. And I um, I had all kinds of grand ideas, and I kept making it bigger and smaller and. I wanted it to be super, super portable, and um, and it's worked out very well for us, right? You know, as what we want. It's amazing to be in here. Something that's not conveyed through the video, the warmth and the coziness, you know, that's coming off the wood stove, and yeah, just there's something to that. The whole design, it just feels so homey and cozy, and you know, it's such a phenom. And it's a period piece. It's the details are phenomenal. No well, thanks. I mean, it's Thank a you. true. Uh, piece of art people who appreciate it people either think it's really crazy or they really love it and living in the west you know i meet a lot of cowboys and cowgirls will come running across the parking lot because they want to check it out and it's something they can really uh, really get into um you know i meet a lot of like rainbow gathering kids who have dreams that they would love to build something like this or yeah. um, it's a different crowd you know not the high-tech rv crowd maybe doesn't appreciate this sort of life quite as much but uh I think everybody can kind of like it. Yeah, there's yeah, there's something in here everyone can appreciate, if not just for the pure piece of art, but like the woodworkers who are watching this and people who are getting ideas for shelving in their vans mm -hmm. and, or had a bed, how they can do a right. bed. Right. My, my wife had to move for about nine months, and so it was just me and my dog living to, together, and she was living out of town for a job. and. Uh, me and the dog just lived in here, but we were still on our property, so we could go into the house and use the big kitchen and use the restroom. And you know, we had the big house there, but we just basically lived out of it for about nine months, and uh, it was really great. It was just so nice to have this little sanctuary. It it is, yeah, quite it's a sanctuary. Peaceful and quiet, and it's just all my own, and I feel really at home in here. It's really quiet, and there's a lot of noise outside, and it's really quiet in here. Yeah, it, you know, there's a lot of baffling between here and them you know that and and the wood just i think is a nice it's just a nice feel it's got the right echo and it, it just looks right what varnish should you use over the maps i was wondering well i i'm learning so i'm le i went to mod podge actually their varnish um originally i was using a wood varnish and it started peeling and lifting so these over here it okay. shrinks the paper it sticks it down and it shrinks it up a little bit and sticks it really well so this is something people could do that's just such a cool idea yeah so it's got like a glue and then a varnish that goes over the top beautiful it looks beautiful um how can people contact you um do you have any social media yeah i have a website that i've documented a lot of this on called paleotool.com and mm -hmm. um and i have a um well i have an instagram and you can find from there and an mm -hmm. etsy page you can find from there for my leather work i, I do some, some custom like cowboy leather work uh this is a backpack i've done recently beautiful um and I don't have a lot on there today because I've been selling out a lot of stuff recently. I make a little bit of a kind of old 18th and uh, 19th century 
leather goods. Well, these are uh, these are the old overnight bags back oh, for a few wow. hundred years. This is what an overnight bag is. You can sling it over the back of a saddle. You can carry it like a bag. You right. know, so they've got multiple uses. George, thank you so much. Well, George is you. having such a busy day. He's back-to-back -back classes here, uh, teaching joinery and how to make saws, hand saws. Is that right? Yes, right. And um, so thank you, George, so much for taking time out to do this tour with me. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it.